And welcome back to the Morning Blend. Our next guest is on a mission to transform society into asking first before engaging in sexual intimacy. Mike Damish speaks to tens of thousands of people around the world each year to teach people the right things to say, know their boundaries, and even what to do if you see a dangerous situation. Yeah, and we're pleased to welcome back Mike to the Yellow Couch. He is the founder of the Date Safe Project and author of this book. It's called Can I Kiss You? He's here to chat more. Good to see you again. Well, thank you both for having me back. Great yeah. Yeah, it's great to have you here. So we've been teasing it all morning. The number one mistake that parents are making when talking to their kids about sexual assault. You you think it's that definitive? There's one big mistake? There's the one massive one. There's several mistakes, <laughs> but there's one massive one, and that is that they want to protect instead of empower. Uh, mm -hmm. And so they make statements that can be damaging and like what? unintended harm. So, you know, with all this going on in the news, you have to watch what you wear. And what they end up mm -hmm. doing is they blame the victim, the survivor of the crime, for what they wore instead of the person who committed the crime. And they're doing it to be protective, but they're actually causing grave harm. I think that's great. One of the best quotes I heard recently from an author uh, of another book that I'm reading is he said, I want my kids to be smart, not necessarily safe. And it's the same concept. It, it, I think that sort of shocks people to hear that, but it's this empowering them, not just keeping them overly safe and protected. That's and correct. so giving them the, the information. I think in general, um, students probably have fears about asking first or they feel like maybe it's um, it's not as masculine or it's not as romantic as you would see like in a movie of the man stealing a kiss or something like that. How do you address those sorts of thoughts and, and mentalities? Yeah, well with students we'll ask, what is your number one fear? And they'll yeah. be like, Re rejection. And I'll oh. say, yeah, heaven forbid you give them a choice. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and as soon as I do that, the students are like, oh my yeah, gosh, that that's so obvious. awful that I'm actually worried about my reputation and my image yeah. over giving this person a choice. And when you put it that way, they realize, wow, this is messed up what I've been taught to this point in my life. Mm -hmm. And I can change that. What's your sense? Our, our kids, so I'm thinking teenagers, college age, you know, late teens, early 20s. Do, are there boys um, predominantly and girls who say, may I kiss you? Yes, this is the most amazing thing. When you give teenagers the skill sets, we survey them afterwards, and they say 90 to 95 percent, regardless of gender, say they want to ask after seeing and gaining the skill sets of how to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's the key. We have to teach them how to ask because they want to do the right thing. I think as a girl, I've been in the situation where a guy has asked before, the weirdest part is taking that nice moment and then saying yes, because then you sort of like create this awkward moment then right before you kiss. So uh, on the other end of it, as a female, yes. how do you respond in that moment? Can you just lean in? Can you just sort of, or, or do you verbally have to say yes? Treasure the yes. Yeah. Here's why. Your awkwardness of saying yes, like, oh man, I have to say yes, <laughs> is, is his gold. Yeah. Right, because when he gets to hear you say yes, He's like, oh, right? That, that's like, <laughs> this is the best, right? And this is regardless of gender, right? Mm -hmm. So to say, may I kiss you? And to hear that person say, yes, you get to hear they want you. They're attracted to you versus if they just lean in and you're like, all right, where is this going? How far is it? You don't know. You get this wonderful sense of they want this, I want this, it's mutual. Mm -hmm. Well, I get frustrated. I, th I thought about your first comment about be careful what you wear and, and scaring mm -hmm. kids rather than empowering them um, and, and perpetuating wrong things. And I think about people, so for example, you leave the car, uh, the uh, doors unlocked to your house or your car and someone steals something mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's like well you had your doors unlocked as if like th it's your fault right mm -hmm. and and I, I get what you're saying so on the flip side of that what are ways or things we can say to our kids that are empowering rather than the opposite of that exactly let them know they always deserve to have a choice in any sexual situation they have the deserve and have the right to say yes or no mm -hmm. and they should feel good about either like you should feel guilty to say no I get so many students come up to me and go I feel bad if I say no. Mm -hmm. You should feel empowered that, first of all, if the person asked you, they wanted you to have a choice. Mm -hmm. If they didn't ask you, you deserve to have that choice. So yes or no, it's wonderful. And if you ever make a choice that goes against your values and somebody does something awful to you in that moment, it's not because of the choice you made. It's because of the choice they made to do something awful to you. Do not blame yourself for somebody's horrific actions upon you. Mm -hmm. This is key language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How is the Me Too um, movement affecting students in, in what you see in the, in the classrooms and around the country? Well, the wonderful part is that Me Too is enabling more survivors to feel safe coming forward. Mm -hmm. That's the positive part. 
The downside to the Me Too movement is that it's also pressuring survivors to come forward who may not be ready to come forward. Mm -hmm. Like people are pressured, you should come forward, you should come forward. That's not what Me Too is about. Mm -hmm. Me Too is about saying, hey, this is happening and there, it, we need to understand that how often this has already happened. This is a historical moment, not a fad. Yeah. This is just a sign of our history is what it really is. You have kids in college, I know. Uh, my oldest is in college, but my two younger kids will be in college too. And I wonder what you think is the most important thing as it relates to this subject to impart to them. Is it that the issue or the, the choice part of it? It is. The asking and permission? Yeah, and that it should all be based in mutuality. And this is a word we never hear discussed for the most part when we talk about this topic. It should be mutuality. Whatever mm -hmm. the two of you engage in should be mutual. See, mm -hmm. that's different than permission. Permission means I just have to get you to say yes, whether you want to do this or not. Mutual means we're only going to do things we both want to do, yeah. we're comfortable with. And that you can take with you through life, through marriage. It's so beautiful and wonderful. Well, what mm -hmm. age should you start teaching kids to ask or start talking about these topics? Yeah, as soon as your child has the ability to communicate their needs, their wants, and their feelings, you should teach them to be able to ask like for instance, may I give you a hug? You should mm -hmm. role model that because mm -hmm. then they can learn it's okay to say no. I, yeah, I like parent, that. Yeah, we're going to talk about hugging, right? Yes, because uh, you see a lot of parents, and I've, <laughs> I've made this mistake too when my kids are younger. Go give so-and-so a hug. Yeah. And that's not, we really shouldn't be doing that, right? That's correct. And I made the same mistake too. Yeah, okay. you know, And then you realize at one point, what am I doing? Because you don't want them to be so shy and you're, you're trying to help them. But well, not only that, you have guilt as a parent that if they don't give the hug to that person, mm -hmm. you look like a bad right. parent. Or your parent doesn't look loving, right? So yeah, go give grandma a hug. Yeah. Well, I don't want to give grandma a hug. Well, go give grandma a hug. You need to t show grandma you love her. Yeah. And they get the message that if I love someone, I have to show forms of intimacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a really unhealthy message. And mm. I just want to point out, a lot of people know your story because you've been on this show before, but for people who don't, your sister, was she raped in college? Uh, so I was in college at mm -hmm. the time my sister was raped. And she was out of college at the time. And I know it was obviously very upsetting, but what I think is wonderful about that is that you've dedicated your yeah. life to helping people understand these issues that are so hard to talk about, to help parents have the language and to help young people know that they have a choice. Well, thank you, Molly. And that's because of Sherry, right? She's my inspiration. The whole reason I started doing this work and her support of my work has, has meant the world to me throughout these years. It's Pretty wonderful. cool. It's great, great to see you again. People oh, can get a um, yeah. copy of your book, and they should, and they should learn the, these techniques and all this great language that you can share with your family. It's datesafeproject.org for more. The phone number on your screen as well if you'd like to bring Mike to your school, to speak, to do any of that good stuff. You do it all. So thanks for being here. Well, thank you both. Yeah, Wonderful good to, to see, see you again. again.